It's been a while since we've been doing a Photoshop party. It's been almost a month now. That's crazy. Um, welcome back, everybody, for my uh, imaging and all the vacation trips and everything we've been doing. And today, we're going to talk a little bit about the contextual taskbar and some other stuff. When I sent it to Mel, I don't think I said stuff. I think I said another word for it. But uh, You did, but I edified it. <laughs> <laughs> Mel made it uh, so it's user-friendly. So anyway, let's go ahead and get started with the important stuff first. Da -da 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 -da. Da -da 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 -da. Get everything out of the way here. All my Zoom stuff that blocks everything and hopefully y'all can see my screen right now and mike that is the wrong ad that is not your new ad dude okay um <laughs> wow the new ad said 2023 by the way so you might want to no. double check that no double. send me a new one so i can get a fresh one up all right i'll do it right now um, is it in San Diego? Because Marcy Dugan sent out one that says it's in San Diego. I was on the impression it was in. It's been moved from San Diego to um, Valencia. 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 Okay. So yeah. it's a shorter, shorter drive for you. Yeah. <laughs> so sign up now. Anyway, West Coast School, the dates are still the same on here. Okay. June 9th through 14th, 2024 in Valencia. <clears throat> um, Photoshop class zero to 60 in a week. Rule number one is to come to have fun. If you can't come to have fun, take another class there instead of mine because <laughs> we are going to have fun. So um, I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be a blast and all kinds of good information. Things have changed so much in Photoshop that my last year's class is only a portion of this year's class because all the AI stuff, because we will be talking about AI, how to use it and stuff like that. So let's move on. Um, oh, how did that get in there? Dwight likes to put pictures of me in there. So I thought I'd send Dwight a message, but he's not on today. So we'll just get rid of that. He looks like Hazimosa. <laughs> <laughs> and that's his normal face. So yeah, ring the bell, ring the bell. <laughs> um, so today I want to talk a little bit about the contextual taskbar. Um, we got a couple of things going on in this one right here. Right now I'm in the, um, well, I'm in the type tool, but it's not set to type yet. I have select subject, remove background. Um, you have create new adjustment layer or more options, which includes basically pin the bar. I keep my bar pinned on the bottom. I did a program with um, the wonderful. You might want to show your Dwight picture again now. Yeah, I got to. I got to find it first. Um, I took Julianne Koss class and she pins her toolbar to the top. So you're, if you want to do that, you can. If you don't want to do that, because um, all you have so to do is grab the question, the Mike. When you um, on the taskbar, when you um, if you have it pinned down there at the bottom of the photo, and you make that photo a little bigger, does the taskbar does the photo go over the taskbar, or does it still no. stay? So if I made it bigger, okay, the taskbar so stays stay. right where I okay, it. so it does stay. Okay, yeah. Um, you can unpin it so you, it'll move around. So if I select the face, so I do a lasso around the face. Um, if I unpinned it, reset toolbar position, let's do that, unpin it. And it automatically jumped right underneath them. And every time you do something, let's say I do a selection up here, the taskbar will go where your selection is, which drives me crazy. I want it in one spot. Um, Have you had any issues though? Because I pin it, and then if I like go to another tool and come back, I have to repin it again. It doesn't happen to me too. It happens all the time. It it doesn't stay there once I've switched to other tools and come back or. Yeah, I'm switching tools and it's staying right. Where it's well, of course, to. because you're 
<laughs> it knows that I am in charge. Okay. It, it, you have to be the alpha to tell it where it needs to stay. Oh, boy. Oh. <laughs> wow. 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 Hey, I'll tell you what. Thanks, Mikey. I, I, Let me I go did. to the shop and get my safety glasses. <laughs> yeah, you might. I'm, a, I'm putting my high boots on. <laughs> <laughs> um, I did a program. Well, I did wine country in Sacramento. And when I first started up in wine country connecting to their projector, I could see my image on my layer panel. But there was nothing on the, the desktop. It was blank. I had to reboot my computer, start over. And then when I went to flatten image, flatten image normally is down here at the bottom of your layers. Well, it was up at the top. And I just, there were demons in that room. And Judy can testify to that because everybody was having computer issues. And it was like, oh my God, I couldn't believe it. Anyway, I pinned mine to the bottom so I know where it's at. Um, if you want it at the top that makes you happy, then go ahead and put it there. If you don't like it there, then wherever you want it, you can let it float. Or you can go up to window, contextual taskbar, and say goodbye to your contextual taskbar. But I tend to use it a lot lately because it works really well. Um, if I go to, let's say, my type tool, T for type, click on here make a selection where I'm going to type it at. If you look at the contextual taskbar, let's go ahead and move it up so we can see it right up here. The current font is Gotham HTF, which I've got no idea where, what it does. I've never used that font before, except I was working on a project yesterday where I had to copy the font to put it on a layer. And so I went to hit escape to type and then match font. And so it matched the font that I liked. I, I selected that font, matched it and used it for doing that. So um, as you do things like the font, the type tool, you can change the size or you can leave it like it is. You can change the color. So we can change to red. Um, you can do those three things right there. Also on where you have the size right here, you can drag the T's to the right, which makes it bigger. That's called Ooh. a scrubby zoom. Or you can drag it to the left to make it smaller. Ooh. And if now, you want Can to you make the task bar bigger so you can see the stuff in there? No. Wow. The contextual taskbar. So for us blind people were. Yeah. If you're over 50, you're <laughs> then you gotta go out of luck. Your, you gotta go up to your top toolbar if you're, and it's about the same size up there too. Yeah, it's not much bigger. So okay. <laughs> Mike Mike's passed fifty-three times. So actually I'm fifty-four, so I've passed uh. it four times. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so you can change all your stuff up here. Um, and I think I've said this before that thou shalt not use papyrus and there's another font comic, comic sans comic sans thou shalt not use if you're trying to do a professional um image where you want professional looking fonts. Those are funny fonts to be used for nothing. So um, I've, if I, I've, I've never seen those. I'm just if I go to my brush, and it's not going to do anything for. The, I thought it did something for the brush, but I guess not. So, but if you want to change your brush, you can right click, and it brings up all this extra stuff up here. So you can change the hardness and softness and size and all that good stuff too, or you can come over to your brush tools over here. You got brushes and brush settings. So you can do both. And while I'm on brush settings, let's go ahead and make our brush hard, 100% hard. And 
Never mind. It's not in there. Hardness. Here it is. Wow. Brain. Right now it's set to 25% on a hard round brush. If I take it to 100%, this is how brushes work, just for your information. It's When you set it to 100%, it will put dots in there at 100%. For every one dot is 100% of a brush. So if I were to paint with it right now, and I'll go to the white brush, make it a little bit bigger. That's at 100%. If I take it down to 1%, it won't go to zero for spacing. It's 1%. You can draw, and it makes a straight line. The default is 25%, where it defaults to. And if you look at, that's at 25% that's at 1% and that's at 100%. So that's just a little gee whiz information for you today. Um, let me see if I can find the other image I wanna work on today. I believe it's this one. Nope. How about that one? Is that it? There we go. That's the image we want to work on today. So now that he's joined us, I can show everybody. <laughs> Sorry, Dwight. Had to do that. A little payback. Um, let's say... <laughs> Why are you laughing, Mel? Oh, because the, the, the picture Dwight has in this background now. Uh-oh. Does that mean I need to take a look? find oh okay that's a good one <laughs> dwight 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 what are we going to do with you um let's say i want to change the color of the shirt so super easy to do go to command shift a or go up to filter down to camera raw filter and i'm going to go to masking tool go down to people we're going to find peoples come on find the people there's a people we found the people and then we're going to find a shirt which go down to clothes you can do facial skin body skin eyebrows eye sclera the white part the iris and pupil lips this is fun just going through these teeth Hair, hair and facial hair this technically is ai because it's doing it automatically for you but what i'm going to do is i'm going to change the color of his shirt so let's go ahead and i'm just going to drag the hue over i think we did this before and we'll make it green super easy to do well instead of going back and forth to the filter what you can do is select the shirt so you can go to your uh, object selection tool or your quick selection tool, whichever one you like the best. I like the object selection tool because I just drag around where I want it. And it's going to pick the shirt for me. Right? No, it's going to include the arms. Well, forget that. Command D to deselect. Go up to select. And then... I thought I had a saved selection, so it should load a selection, but apparently not. I screwed that up. Hey, Mike, can I ask you a real quick question? You yes, you may. Command, command D to uh, deselect. What, uh -huh. what happens if you go to the Z button to go back? What, is that the same thing? Um, yes and no. With If I have a selection, so let's go ahead and make my selection of a shirt real quick. We're doing object selection. I'm using the lasso tool in the object selection and it should select the shirt. Okay, so let's go ahead and go to select, save selection and we'll call it shirt. Um, if I do some painting, take my brush, 
and I brush something on there like that. If I hit Command Z, it won't undo the selection. But if I hit Command D, or if I go to filter, I'm sorry, select, deselect, either one will work and unselect it. Okay. So let's go ahead and go to select load selection. And we got shirt in there. So we'll click OK. And it reloads the selection. However, if you look in the bottom right corner, it didn't get the rest of the shirt. That's not good. So what I'll do is hold the hit W for my quick selection tool or object selection tool and then hold the shift key while I circle it and that adds that in. Hmm. So now we can go in and do a adjustment layer. So we'll go here to hue and saturation and we can change the color just by going on hue. Dodger blue, that works wonderfully. <laughs> But let's say I wanted to go to white. That's going to be kind of a pain in the tush. So I take my lightness up, and it's not going to do well when we get up there. So let's go ahead and take it up just a little bit, take the saturation down. We can get to gray pretty easily. White's a little bit more difficult. So let's go ahead and add a another curves adjustment and I'm going to go up to the hand up here the little finger and I'm going to select this part of the shirt God bless you thank you and I'm going to raise it up to make it go wider and then obviously on the areas where it needs to have shadow I'll click on the shadow areas and drag it down. And you can see what happened here was dragging this over made it go white, or you can drag this side over. Ew. Yeah, gets ugly, huh? And it works really bad on him, too. We'll just click that section and drag it up a little bit more. And you can see the curve we're getting is like totally wonky. Like you're, get, losing, you're losing detail on the shirt too. It's just... Losing a little bit of detail on the shirt and look at his face. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's gone wonky as well. We can fix that easily by holding the option or alt key in between the curves layer and the saturation layer. Or we can go down here to create clipping mask or on the bottom of the properties panel where I'm working in the curves, I can click on this little box with the down arrow and that's a clipping mask as well. So it should theoretically create a clipping mask. Now a shirt is white and if it's too white, you can drop the opacity down a little bit or you can raise up or lower however you want to make your shirt go. Used to be you couldn't change things from black and white or to white or black. So let's say we, we got this and I'm going to flatten it down. And now he's wearing a white shirt. Well, what happens if he changes his mind and wants a colored shirt? Let's go ahead and go back to select load selection click OK and then we're going to add another layer on here we're going to add a solid color so let's go with I think pink would be good for him and you go holy cow that works wonderfully doesn't it <laughs> and before we do that I need to go back into my little mistake there Go to W, which reloads that tool. Hold the shift key. And just the opposite. If you want to take it out, you hold the option key. So let's go ahead and go to solid color. 
and we went with pink before pink is good and there you go he's now got a pink shirt if you go to your um, blending mode up at the top go to multiply it's not quite perfect but we can drop the density down a little bit actually that's not what I want to do I want to go to here and we're going to stick with that color um, what I would do is go down to his buttons because most shirts don't have pink buttons and what you can do is go to B for brush make a nice round brush and I'm going to paint with black And because we made the colors go, so go go so bright. Are you sure you're painting with black? I'm 99% sure I'm painting with black. You can barely see the detail in there because we made the button go so white. Mm. You can see detail in that one. So that's how you get rid of all the, or add color to it once you're in white. You have to go into a color, solid color, and then go to multiply, and that works wonderfully. And then let's go to the eyeglass glare. This is one thing that people hate doing is repairing eyeglass. It's like, oh man. So what I'll do is take my lasso tool. circle around here there's two ways to do this number one generative fill and if one doesn't work you try the other one and again with generative fill you see the um, tip up there at the top it changes every time that didn't work for squat that didn't do so good that's not bad okay command Z Command D to deselect. I'm going to go to my remove tool and I have changed my keyboard shortcut for the remove tool from J from the healing brush to R for remove. And it used to be the rotate tool, which I got rid of. I just hit enter and magic happens and everything's under control. Not at all. I'm going to make a copy layer and do the same thing again. Now it'll work. When something doesn't go right, you look and see what happened. Well, you were on your mask a minute ago, Michael, not the That's, layer. Right. I was on the mask. It didn't matter which one I was on. It wouldn't have worked. So either the layer or the mask. So I just made a copy layer and added it in. And you can see. Can you use the fade tool on the remove? Can I use the fade tool on the remove? Let's go to edit, fade, and it was. Did I, do a, <clears throat> I did a step in between there, didn't I? No? Let me find out. Let's go make the brush bigger. We'll take out that button there. And then I'll try the fade tool. Okay, button's gone. Edit. And the fade tool will not work. Thank you for the question, because I didn't know. Do you have to create a layer for or a mask for that? Um, what you could do is do it on a separate layer and then either adjust the opacity or the fill to take care of that. Hmm. So sometimes generative fill works wonderfully. Sometimes a remove tool works even better. So you never know which one you're going to get. Had I decided, let's go back a few steps. Uh, so we have the selection here. Let's go to generative fill. I'm not going to type anything in. Click generate.
and see what it does this time. Still not good. All three are. Well, let's do this. Command D to deselect. I mean, Command Z. Let's expand our selection. So we'll go to Select, Modify, Expand. And let's do three pixels just to make it a little bit bigger. Now we'll do the generative fill. Make sure we got everything in there. Let's see what happens. It may have had a little bit outside the area saying, oh, I'm, I'm reading this, so I want to go ahead and add it too. There you go. Just made a bigger selection and it worked. Hmm. Is that magic or what? Crazy. Any questions on that part of it? Okay, let's get into some miscellaneous stuff. Command W, don't save. Hide Photoshop. Hide that guy. Let's go ahead and go into Adobe Firefly. If you have an Adobe account, the Adobe Cloud, you can use Firefly now. And with this, we can generate some bizarre stuff. Um, let's see, spelling leopard. That's how you spell leopard. Good. Um, let's do three leopards. Drinking from pond at sunset. And it's going to come. The default is always square. I like to change that to landscape so it looks more like a photograph. And then normally the default is art. So let's go ahead and go photo and landscape, run it again. We did some cool stuff in uh, wine country in Sacramento, made some really interesting stuff. Um, I want to change this to a soft sunset. It seems kind of harsh. And it's running it. And you look on Facebook and other social media today, people are claiming pictures to be their own. Um, it, it's amazing what they claim. And these aren't too darn bad. It's just amazing. It's crazy what, what you can do. I, I foresee MIRs requiring raw images to prove it. I would love to have that. Amen. Um, yeah. I, it, it, yeah. It's got to be a mandatory. I mean, without a doubt. Well, they did it at IPC for um, landscape and I think PJ, didn't they? Was it PJ you had to include yeah. it to? Um, I would love to see them do it for all of them. You got to yeah. have the raw. But if you shot with your cell phone, it's kind of a challenge that way. But there is metadata that you can go after. Um, volcano flow with um, what do you call the green skies? Oh, um, Aurora Borealis. Thank you. Let's see if I can spell Aurora. Uh, now, is this fee based on this, Michael? How are they handling that? Right now, um, what they're saying is you're okay doing as many as you want. Um, when you go over a certain amount, they're going to start slowing you down. So for somebody like me that's teaching Photoshop, I need to talk to them about increasing my ability but i mean look at the that's insane Jeez. look out peter lick can you take can you take an existing photo and do that with uh an existing photo michael you can there's a style 
here underneath you got landscape down to photo down to style and you can include a reference image but i don't know if it's from theirs okay you can upload your own so if we wanted to do say like yosemite um you can use your mat image to help match it up and i have not tried that yet um it'd be interesting to try but for now i'm still learning this and it's crazy i mean this is that's really cool but you can still by looking at it you can still tell that it's ai but it's getting better and better every day i mean they're improving it so it's firefly.adobe.com do you get it from your creative cloud or do you have to just go to that website um, firefly.adobe.com and then you have to sign in so i signed into my account and i have 230 of 250 credits when you're running low on credits continue generating content and no additional cost for a limited time uh, julianne said that there's no plan for the immediate future but somewhere down the road they might they might start charging more so ay 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 amazing the stuff that's out there it's cray cray any comments questions or concerns well, I'm with Dennis. I think everybody, ha I, I think it's going to get to the point where everything has to go on to a, a, um, a raw file. I mean, you have to show the data, man, everything. They, At oh, Dwight, why you do that to me? Um, <laughs> you started it, actually. <laughs> no, he started it a long time ago. Um, let me go up to share screen again to Firefly. If I download one of these, let's say I download this one. It says, um, promoting transparency in AI. When downloading sharing content, credentials will be applied to let people know, see it was generated with AI. Um, I haven't found where to find these credentials at. I've actually downloaded these images and um, they're not showing up any credentials so somewhere in there they got credentials but i don't know where mm -hmm. so john awesome. i'm going to be taking over your japan trip and doing all the cherry blossoms and stuff like that dennis i'm doing your uh, yellowstone trip and doing all that stuff so all y'all that have trips out there i'm going to make money right and left i'm sure you'll get better images than i got <laughs> I don't think so. I've seen your images. This could be, guys rock. it's going to be a Peter Lick challenge now with all those galleries. You know, it's it's amazing the stuff they come up with and how they do it. I, I don't know. That's uh -huh. above my pay grade. You know, I taught a program in Orange County a couple of years ago, and the first question was, can you tell me what the algorithm is for the uh, healing brush tool? Really? No. Next question. We don't need to know what makes it work. We just need to know that it works. It's magic. That's all I know. It's magic. So what's, and I'm going to put this out to everybody here. What? How do you feel about this, about uh, the future of photography, which since this is all being generated AI and everything. And this, you know, I know there'll always be something to be taught by, but more and more now and looking at that, it's, it's a matter of typing it in like you did and going like, what's the sense of having a physical photographer around? Well, these all come, well, Adobe's come from- and I'm not being negative, photos, first of all. So okay? I understand. Yeah. Um, but I see photography still as art. Yeah, you can create something by typing in words and say, look what I created. Well, you didn't create it, the computer did. And people like John and Dennis and- um, Kimberly and Suzanne and Dwight and Bruce, all these people that put out art pieces. I mean, look at the bird behind Bruce. That was not computer generated. Well, it was computer generated, but with the help of Bruce who shot it in the first place. 
So, you know, yeah, you can do all kinds of stuff with the AI, but I, I don't see it replacing photography yet. Well, you got to have the photography to get to extrapolate the images for the AI. I mean, there's got to be something to capture out there to think know what it is. Yeah. But on the business aspect of it, because I still photograph for business, Kevin, Kimberly, the majority of us are a thing. I, I feel it, I feel it's kind of a, a little bit of a challenge now since they go, you know, why do we need you here? We can just go ahead and do a snapshot and drop, add everything in the background, you know? I have not had one client ask me for anything like that. They want my portrait with the lighting, the composition, and they want them retouched nicely, but, you know, I've not had one client and what's AI been coming around the last two years, basically it's really improving now, but I've not had one business client headshot or anybody ask for any of that. So I think sometimes we're our own worst enemies thinking about what could happen. I'm sure when, um, you know, the 35 came in over the two and a quarter and the, you know, the digital overcame when the, the film process in the late night, early nineties, everybody was freaking out, but I think, uh, nothing's going to replace integrity with good composition good lighting good and everything nothing's going to replace that yeah well when digital came out kodak said in five years film would be done and i kind of laughed at him um because no you're not going to get rid of, rid of film that fast but they improved the camera so much um well, actually, I think they said, if Kev, uh, Kevin can correct me, I think they actually said it won't replace film for 10 years, and it was three years that film was replaced. They actually, I think that's how they said it. Maybe uh, Kevin could correct me on that, but I remember that conversation. And you know, that's a totally different aspect. We still got to have the captures. We still got to do the stuff, and I don't think this is going to take over. There's a big hoopla on it right now, but I don't see it um, – I see it cha making some changes that, yes, Michael, we're going to have to adapt to. Mm -hmm. And we're going to have to not be like the dinosaurs, but we still have to go out there and have the vision to create those images. I agree. And, you know, there's always people that will cheat in print competitions to try and get a better score. Um, yeah, then we're the bastard judges when we catch them. Well, <laughs> it's true. <laughs> Play they don't want to take responsibility for being a cheater, but they're going to go ahead and, and you know red light you because you called yeah. about it. So bring it on. Yeah, Any no, other questions out there? Okay. Good conversation. I... Nothing? Going no. once, going twice. Let me kill the recording so you ask your question.